Pernak here, and I'm going to go over the basics of what you need in order to get started in block printing. The most important name you're going to learn today is Speedball, because they make the majority of the products that I'm going to mention today, so it's good to know that name. First off, I do not have it to show to you, because I just do not own it, but it is the basic Speedball block printing tool kit. I like this kit, and when I worked at Daniel Smith, I would sell this kit to anyone who wanted to get started. And it's always the best one, in my opinion. It has with it a bench hook, a baron, a brayer, and the carving tools. And those are going to be the most important things. And that gets you started with all the tools you're going to need. Other than that, you will need ink and paper. And that's pretty much all you need to get do to get started in this. So this is the Speedball carving tool. It's the most basic one there is on the market. There's a few other companies that make similar type of tools. It's just the plastic handle for the end and the bottom unscrews. And you can keep your extra blades in there. And you basically take a blade, you loose, take them out, and then you loosen this and you stick the blade in there and tighten it down. Now they have a variety of different blades available. So this is going to be... So this is the small V-gouge. Let's see if we see it. You can kind of see it a little bit, I think. They don't like to show up very well. So yeah, you can kind of see that small V-gouge. It's a good for detail. They have a bigger V-gouge. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. So there's a V, v big V-gouge. It's not real detailed. It's not real sharp. It's a little more windy. There's a U-gouge right here. As you can see, that's the U-gouge. They even have a square gouge. And they have a knife like this, which can be really good for carving alongside something, um, alongside the edge of a line or something like that. Um, because one side is flat and the other side has got the bevel where the blade is. So it can be really good for tracing along the edge of a line and especially with detail. And because it's curved, it actually allows you to make some really interesting, more easily curved lines sometimes. Um, I find I don't use this blade very often. I use the small V-gouge. Now, the downside to this product and this tool is A, sometimes the blades aren't made very well and they'll have like weird nubs and they're just really cheap. So they're not always the best. Um, a couple of them can be a little off kilter or have some damaged product or they'll be slightly damaged or they have like weird nubs. They're just, they're just not the best things. And the other one that it can be a problem is this trying to, it's happening right there. Sometimes the blades get really hard to remove. Um, and hence, if you're going to do that, I highly suggest that you have two handles because you can buy just a handle so that way you can have a small like your small v gouge and then maybe your small or large u gouge that way you can do detail work and then large for clearing away if you're swapping between tools but overall like i said that's the basic speedball tool it's highly versatile it's highly popular and it's been around for years so um and it's a good tool it there's but it does have its downsides. Like I said, the blades like to get stuck and sometimes the blades aren't the highest quality, but you can replace the blades and you just buy new ones. They normally come in a two pack and you're going to like two or three dollars for a package, I would believe. So, but that's the speedball tool, guys. If you decide you don't want the speedball route and you actually want to have individual tools, there are some inexpensive options out there for you. Namely, these style. These are the Japanese style. They're very popular. This is Niji, N-I-J-I, by Yasu Tomo. It's 
So they're decently inexpensive. They are just inexpensive steel. Uh, you can sharpen these, and I would recommend that you do hone them and sharpen them when you get them home because they will not be the greatest. They could be a little... I don't know if you can see it. You can see the, how unsharp that is. It's not a very good idea for these things. Um, they can break, and when they break, you just buy a new set. Uh, the sets are very inexpensive, around $10, I would say. But they do have your V gouges, your U gouges, uh, your flat chisels, which are kind of nice. And then they also have the pointed ones, which you kind of carve along the edge of the line. They're made for the Japanese wood block style, but you can still use them with linoleum, and lots of people do. Now, the next tool you'll need to know about is the brayer, which is this right here. These ones are from Speedball, and there is nothing wrong with Speedball brayers. I actually like their brayers in general. Um, the one that it comes in the kit, if you decide to get the kit, it's made of plastic. It's completely plastic, unlike this one, which has metal. And you can actually pop the rollers out, which is actually kind of nice because it makes it easier to clean them sometimes. You know, you can pop them out and it makes it easier to clean them. That's one nice thing about them, but they are inexpensive plastic and the handles are a little small so sometimes it's not the most comfortable thing to use but for something to get you started it's a good idea. Um, there are regular brayers right here come in a variety of sizes. This is their four inch one. This is their six inch one. They recently, um, I would say recently, but within the last five years they came out with this little guy, the little one and a half inch one, which is actually very I had to go and rebuy them because I had lost mine or ruined mine because I had left it staged down. Um, I, I ruined it. I got a flat spot on it. So I had to go and buy a new one and I haven't even used it yet. So as you can see, um, they're soft. You know, these are their soft brayers. They do make a hard brayer, which I actually am not particularly fond of. I don't think it works very well. I think it's just too hard. Um, but other than that, that's the uh, brayers that I recommend are the Speedball. There's no need to get into anything else until you decide you just don't want to use them anymore. The other tool you're going to need is a bench hook. Now, Speedball has one. They sell it separately. It looks like this. As you can see, it's got, it's almost, it's like a hook right here in there. And basically, what you do, let's take a look here. You take it and you put it right here on the edge of your desk. And the reason is it, this bench hook serves double duty from Speedball. A, it's made of an enameled metal, so it's nice and smooth. You can put your ink on here, and then you can roll it out with your brayer. Or, you can use it as a bench hook, which you can put your little thing here. You can put your linoleum here, or your uh, block, or whatever you're using, and carve with it. So that way, when you're carving with your tools, you don't have to worry about stabbing yourself, you know, you know, trying to hold your block steady and stabbing yourself. Because this is a good safety feature, but it also works really well for a lot of other things too. So it works as an inking plate, which is a good thing. You don't need to get an inking plate and you got this. It works really well. And I like this. Um, it's a nice little, it's a nice sized one for working on smaller items. You don't need to have, if you get want to, you can eventually make your own bench hook and make a bigger one. But bench hook is probably one of the more important things that you're going to use. Another important tool is going to be your Baron. The Speedball Kit comes with one. It looks very similar to this one right here. The only difference is instead of this plastic, uh, this, uh, beige plastic, it's red plastic, 
And this one has a metal ring around it, as you can see. And it's a Teflon, and it's also got a little bit of a, I don't know if you can see it, but a little bit of a squish to it. It's a little padded. Um, there's the red one does not have that. It's just the smooth Dover dome one, which for what it is, is not a bad idea. You know, um, it's inexpensive. It works just fine. You don't need one like this. Um, that's this one actually costs twice as much as the red one. I actually like the red one more than this one, but this one has its purposes. Hence why I have it. Now the other barons you can get are the Japanese student style barons like this one. This one's the small one. And this is a bigger one here. Haven't even used it yet, right here. So it has a bamboo leaf covering on it, right? Like this, as you can see. And they do dry out and they do crack, but they're, they're very usable and they do work well. If you want to keep them lasting longer, you can use something like Camilla oil or maybe even mineral oil or baby oil, but um, they recommend Camilla oil. You take a little bit of that, put it on your fingers and coat it in here. Um, these are inexpensive ones. This is also, once again, from uh, Yasumoto, no, Yasutomo. <laughs> I said that one wrong, didn't I? I don't know why I have problems with that one. I would say all day at work today, I just can't. So now that we've gone over the tools, the next thing you're going to need is something to carve. Most common things are, I have rearranged my studio and got it a little neater, is linoleum. And it comes in a couple different ways. You can buy it by the sheet unmounted like this. And it has this burlap backing on it. Because linoleum is basically linseed oil that's hardened with cork, and that's typically what it is. Um, they also sell it like this, where it's mounted. Now, I like the gray linoleum, battleship gray is what they call it, and it is by far the more popular one that I like. Um, you can get more inexpensive gold cut linoleum, much harder to use, actually. It's much harder to cut. It's not something I highly recommend for a beginner. Um, even these can be harder to cut. This one I've actually dyed with a ink to make it easier to know where I carve things off. That's a little trick that you can use. The other thing that you might want to try right here, are these from Speedball. Now Speedball may, has linoleum too. I'm just trying to remember which way to go. Uh, are these speedy carves and speedy cuts? Um, let's see here. So this is going to be the easiest one to use, the pink one right here. Let's switch these around so you can actually read them. The pink one is going to be the easiest one to carve. As such, it's also the most flexible and it's the least dense of all of them. So it's not going to hold detail nearly as well as the speedy cut. The speedy cut, as you can see, it's even, it's even thicker, as you can see there. As you can see, it's just, it's nearly, it's thicker. So you can actually probably carve on both sides of it if you so choose to. But this one is more dense, so it holds detail a little bit better. It is something that I really like. Um, it works decently well. It's okay. I don't really care for this uh, either of these products. And then this blue one, it's, it's thinner, like the Speedy Carve, but it's Speedy Cut Easy. So it's supposed to be a little bit easier to carve. Plus, it's not meant for use with oil-based inks. You're going to have to use water-based inks with it um, because I guess it just falls apart. I haven't tried that. You're also going to need paper because once you've got your carving and you've carved everything up, you want to print it. You want to put it on paper. So the paper I recommend most to most people for starting out is the Strathmore Printmaking 300 series. 
It's got the yellow cover. It's a nice paper. It prints well. I actually like this paper. It's not bad at all. Um, they do make a 400 series, which has a brown cover. It's a dark brown. I do not like it. It's way too thick a paper for a beginner to use. And plus, it's... I haven't had very much success with it. It's just way too thick. I mean, you need a press to use with it. And even then, the press doesn't work that great. It's just, I don't like that paper very much. But this paper from them is very nice. And if there's other papers you want to get into, there are a lot of Japanese papers are very popular for people printing by hand using a Baron. Two of them, one of the most popular papers you will see people say is Kitakata. This is from Aragami. It's a, as you can see, this is a sample. I uh, can't really see that. Can you? There it is, Kitakata. And they come in a certain size. Um, it's all in Japanese. Uh, it's a very nice paper. I mean, they're basically about your 16 by 20 ish size, ballparking it. Um, and they range about four to five dollars a sheet. So they can be a little more um, expensive. Uh, another one that's very popular, a lot of people like Hosho. I do not have a sample of that. It's not one that I particularly use much. I do use Kitakata. I do like Kitakata. And I use this a lot too. Uh, Masa paper. And it's a nice paper, but as you can see the difference, Very stark white versus a very natural color. Um, most of the Japanese papers are not very bright white, um, but Masa is very nice. I like Masa. It also, you can see the texture on it right here. And if you flip it over, it doesn't have any texture. It's very, why that color shift? It's very smooth, um, and the reason for that is supposed to be so your Baron can glide over the top of it really easily. But So you print on the textured side always with any of the Japanese papers. That includes Kitakata. Kitakata still has texture too um, on one side and smooth on the other. You can also use Sumi paper which is basically the same thing, which is the same thing. I will have some links to all the papers, of course, which ones I recommend you can go and buy them, either through Amazon or Blake or wherever I suggest you buy them from. Finally, the last thing that we have to talk about is ink. Speedball, again, is the brand I'm going to recommend to most people. So this is their water-based ink. So it's water-soluble, it cleans up with soap and water, but it is water-based. It does dry out quickly. So if you ever buy these, make sure you also buy the retarder. Add a little bit of tar retarder to it and then mix it up with a palette knife or an inking knife if you have one, but a cheap, inexpensive palette knife or even a uh, little plastic scraper will work. Um, so just mix a little bit that of that into the ink before you roll it out, and that will keep your ink from drying on your plate or on your roller and on your linoleum before you can print it. Another product, if you want to go a little bit better, is another Speedball, their Professional Ink. I really like their Professional Ink. It's good. It's a high pigment load. They have great pigments on them. They actually tell you which pigments they use, unlike their water-based ones. They don't tell you which pigments they use. Don't know why they don't. It just doesn't sell you. Which is actually kind of upsetting that they don't do that. But they are non-toxic. But the nice thing about this is the professional ink. It's an oil-based ink, which is what more printers actually like to use as oil-based inks as opposed to water-based ones. But this one has been chemically modified and the chemistry on it's been changed so that way it cleans up with soap and water, which is a nice thing. And it's a very nice ink. They come in cans. It's the only way you can get them. As you can see, here's the can. And they have a little thin piece of plastic on top, typically. I put a piece of glassine on here because 
that's what I had. And glassine is something professionals use. As you can see, you just pull this back. You take your ink knife, grab a little bit out of there, and then you put this back down. And because it's water soluble, it's easy cleanup, and it's one that I recommend to most people to use because it is a good ink. Now, Speedball does have a fabric ink, which is the same concept, water soluble, uh, oil-based ink. I've used it before. I'm not a big fan of it. I know some people do use it for fabric printing, and they swear by it. It works but I'm not a big fan of it. Um, and they're oil-based ink. They have little tubes that are like this too that are oil-based and I've used it before and it is runny and stringy and I'm not a fan of it. Um, why they couldn't make their ink as good as this one, I don't know, but uh, I think they worked close, more closely with professional artists on this one than they did their oil-based ink. All right, another thing that I'm gonna recommend right now is parchment paper. This is just baking for baking. It's parchment paper for baking. It's not an art supply at all. And the reason I like this is that I use it. So let's take a look down here as to why I use it. So you have your print like this. And then you want to do your printing. So you're gonna take your paper and put it on top there after you've inked it. Now, most of these papers, especially Japanese papers, but in most papers, your baron can damage the paper. So it is a good idea to have a barrier. And because this stuff is so um, slick, it's really nice. It's better than, and then you would just use it like this to transfer your image. It acts as a good barrier. It makes your baron glide better over the paper and protects your paper from being damaged, which is one of the reasons I like that product. It's always good to have some parchment paper. It's a good little tip for the beginner. And that's everything you need to get started. Most of this stuff can be done for everything under $100, which isn't that bad. I know the Speedball Toolkit that I recommend costs about $42 to $43 on Amazon. An ink like this is normally around $5 to $7. So right there, you're only at $50. This is going to be around $8. And uh, any of your blocks, normally anywhere from $5 to $10. Also depends on the size that you get. Linoleum can be less expensive than the Speedy Carbs. But these, I think, are about $5 to $7 on Amazon. And finally, what else was there? I think that was about it. Uh, Price-wise, yeah. I mean, the toolkit, about $42. Ink, around $7 to $8. Paper, around $7 to $8. And Speedy Carbs, around their actually $5 to $7 price range, I believe, or 5 to 8 All depends on what you need. Um, then you can get a palette knife. That's an you get inexpensive ones, a couple dollars here and there, parchment paper. Everything is under $100. Even if you decide to piecemeal it, let's say you want to get the Niji uh, products. Those are around $15 for a set, uh, for the big set, uh, $15 to $20. It's not that much. A Baron ranges from $10 to $15, um, at least for this kind of Baron. But if you want to get away inexpensively, like I said, get the Speedball Kit. It's your best option. Until next time, guys. Great seeing you. Bye.